eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the universe uses eclipses as a tools to get us moving some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change we are very reluctant to change we don't even think about needing that that there's going to be a great need for change eclipses they come around they approach us they surprise us they have this element of i never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving hello hello astrology lovers and welcome back to my channel my name is ildiko thank you so much for joining me today where i'm going to walk you through the astrology of may and i'm going to break it down to all 12 signs uh, after introducing the main aspect of the month for you. Mm. I always suggest uh, to watch this video primarily for your rising sign because this is the one that gives you the more precise prediction but secondarily you may also watch it for your sun sign uh, which especially if you were born during the day or watch it for your moon sign which is a more internal manifestation but it's especially is important if you were born during the night time so without further ado let's jump right into it so the majority of may sun is going to be still in the sign of taurus this is the season when we enjoy the flowers and the beauty and nature at least up here in the northern hemisphere and then on the 21st of may sun is going to move into gemini the Gemini season is coming up after that. Now, Venus on the second is going to move into Aries. And uh, that means that we kind of going to crave passion. And, uh, you know, we are going to be very active in our love life and prob probably social life as well. Now, on the 10th of May, however, Mercury is going to go retrograde in his own sign, in the sign of Gemini. Now, Bur Mercury being retrograde in his own sign will definitely cause all sorts of communication problems. Misunderstandings and gossips are highly likely, as well as difficulties in learning, processing information, transportation, etc. We are going to need to re- think, relearn, and rewrite uh, the ways we express our thoughts. Up until now, since uh, there were some mistakes done in the past, and now this is the time to make amends and fix those mistakes, uh, those issues. So we can move uh, with a more purposeful way, a more uh, a clearer way of communication, speaking, and liaising uh, with others after the retrograde period uh, will have finished. Uh, beside the communication problems, usually there are problems with regard to transportation, and travels and trips and so you want to make sure that before you go on a trip at least you know double check make sure that your car was serviced because all sorts of mishaps are happening during the mercury retrograde season when i remember when um, at one point when i didn't do that in a mercury retrograde season and we got stuck on the motorway and i thought we're never going to get home uh you know the car had to be towed home wow. Also, IT uh, devices can then can go funny, you know, so make sure you have backups for your computer, make sure that, you know, if you can postpone that, you know, that new device, um, buying that new device, because um, it's just... Um, you know, things can go wrong. Now, paperwork can be delayed, and that's true with regards to travel plans as well. So they could be delayed as well. And it's also highly suggested not to sign any paperwork during the Mercury retrograde season. But often the case is that they are so delayed that even if you wanted to, you may not be able to. Now, Mercury is going to go Kazemi on the 21st, and that's a very important day when uh, Mercury spends a couple of hours in the heart of the sun. And this is a very important time to receive or maybe ask for a message. And I'm going to tell you when I get to uh, all 12 signs uh, to your sign, when is it going to happen? But you need to convert it to your time zone. 
Now, after that, Mercury is going to move back to Taurus, and that is the sign of, you know, the material things, money, security. And so, um, you know, Mercury was retrograde in Taurus because, again, there were some issues with regards to, you know, finances. Uh, did you value the money you, you spend your money on? There's going to be some tough questions with regard to finances asked. Frivolous spenders, you know, may have a rude awakening. However, this is going to be the right opportunity to review your budget. And this time is, you know, could be inspirational to spend uh, on more sustainable ways in the future. Now, the next uh, big thing that is going to happen is going to be uh, Jupiter on the 11th. Jupiter is going to move into Aries. And so it looks like, uh, you know, Jupiter in Pisces season is over. And it's true, it's going to be over. Mainly it's going to be over. Jupiter is going to move back to, Air, uh, to Pisces um, towards the end of the year, maybe just for a short months. But yes, uh, the majority of the year, Jupiter now is going to leave Pisces for good. Now, Jupiter in Aries is not too bad, however, so we don't have to be too sad. <laughs> Jupiter in Aries uh, actually feels quite okay because Jupiter is also a fiery planet, rules a fire sign, Sagittarius, we know. And so Jupiter does actually quite well in fire signs, which is Aries. Now, for some of you who don't know, Jupiter is the planet of luck, abundance, and wisdom, and higher knowledge, long distance travel as well. And so primarily, it's obviously is going to favor everybody who, who was born um, in Aries, a zodiac sign, you know, Aries sun sign, but uh, it's going to be also good for Aries moon and Aries rising as well. Now, in the collective, it is going to um, be that humans are going to experience luck and growth and opportunity if only if they tune in to their leadership abilities, uh, their initiating abilities, their courageous and enthusiastic abilities. Yeah. All of us can do that. In fact, we are going to have to do that. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be more pioneering and we're going to be um, able to begin new exciting endeavors where bravery and le leadership is going to take precedence over waiting around and seeing what's going to happen. No, Aries is nothing about waiting around. Aries is actually, we know how impatient sign it is and how action-oriented sign it is. So if we take, you know, that Aries spirit a little bit, that means, you know, we are going to attract our fortune. Uh, so we need to lead, we need to initiate, inspire others and demonstrate enthusiasm and courage in order to take the most benefit that Jupiter is going to be able to give. So you have to have faith in yourself. And so for the whole season, as I usually do, I also give you a mantra. And this is uh, going to be this one for the whole entire year for everybody. I believe life is what I make of it. I believe life is what I make of it. And that's going to be your mantra whilst Jupiter is in Aries. Now on the 16th of the month, we are going to have a total blood moon lunar eclipse. And that is going to be the strongest of all eclipses we are in the eclipse season. When I'm making the video, I'm still waiting for uh, the solar eclipse in Taurus, which is going to happen uh, on the 30th of this month. And then so we know that each solar eclipse is followed by a lunar eclipse two weeks later, and that is going to be um, the the total blood moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And that's the one I'm going to talk about now because I'm talking about May astrology. If you want to know about the solar eclipse, it's still in my April video. You can scroll back down and watch it. So this solar eclipse, as I said, is going to be very, very strong, but obviously not everybody is affected. So again, what you need to do, you need to go um, find that link 
uh, cast your chart and see whether or not you have important points and planets on the 25th degree of Scorpio, Taurus, and perhaps also Leo and Aquarius, because these are the fixed signs and these are going to be the most affected by the eclipse. Give it, give or take, you know, three minute orb. So this is going to be a rather emotional lunar eclipse, you know, and it's going to put us into a somber and, you know, a little bit of painful mood as well. So lunar eclipses are usually the time of letting go. And so, uh, you know, we are going to come into some fated endings in terms of in matters of sexuality, intimacy, the hidden and, uh, you know, with regards to uh, other people's money, such as maybe investments or taxes, inheritances, you know, these sorts of things. Saturn is going to square both of the luminaries coming into a so-called T square configuration. And um, we don't usually like Saturnian squares, uh, especially not to the luminaries. They kind of very difficult, you know, they bring up difficulties, they bring up karmic lessons, you know, there's a lesson to be learned here. And so that is going to happen during this uh, full moon uh, lunar eclipse. And the Saturn square also will put us into another, will give us another sense of karma and fatedness, you know, when there is not much you can do. But it, at its best is going to put us into a dark mood where we feel like we are called out for some sort of past mistakes that we have done especially with regards to authority figures and this could put us into some sort of you know a bit of depressive mood as well the ruler of the lunar eclipse is going to be mars because uh, it's a scorpio eclipse and so the mars is going to be exactly on the same degree as um, the jupiter and neptune conjunction occurred on the 12th of April. If you haven't seen that video of mine, it is still not too late, please, I put a link up there, go back and check that video because it's very, very important in order to understand uh, how you have come to this moment. So uh, now Mars is touching the degree of um, Jupiter and Saturn square. So that is going to be uh, how interesting that this is actually happening on the day of this full moon blood moon total lunar eclipse that's going to give us a feeling of a fatedness however mars and neptune are conjoined uh, during this eclipse and this can give us this paranoid delusion and we are already in the somber mood because of that saturn and because of the stress of this lunar eclipse it is very important however that you don't lose your faith you know, you will feel the, uh, the confusion uh, in this solar eclipse energy. You know, you may feel as, uh, you know, you're wearing a blindfold and you don't know where you had it, what action you should be taking, you know, that you are going to lack sense of direction. Mm -hmm. and you feel that you, you need to surrender your control over what is unfolding. Now, if you are very scared easily, you need to take precautions, okay? Because this is extremely, extremely important that this is the time and you shouldn't lose your faith. Uh, you know, if you are self-confident and consider yourself self-aware, then this could be the time when you are taking your first action in order to reach that goal, uh, that dream that uh, you have you have created during that jupiter natural conjunction, so throughout the months of April, okay? Uh, it's very important that you don't fall into this fear and this delusion, this paranoia, you know, you have to consciously choose and leave a higher manifestation of this conjunction. And it's going to be difficult during this um, lunar eclipse because of, you know, the Saturn square, because of the, um, overall stress of the lunar eclipse so it's going to be not easy to keep your faith but you're going to have to do it you know uh you know you have to keep your enthusiasm to chase your dream under 
any circumstance. You have to keep on your enthusiasm to follow your spiritual goals. Now, maybe put your energy into charitable, um, charitable and human rights work as well. Maybe put your energy into healing the sick uh, because that can happen as well but more entirely put your energy to keep on chasing that dream and and not to lose that faith that you have already uh, you know initiated uh, during the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction as I said for uh, for you to understand what I'm talking about you need to watch that video the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction uh, you know how to manifest your dream. Now, during the solar eclipse, uh, Chiron is and Venus are going to be conjoined as well. And that this will definitely suggest that uh, there's going to be some pain and healings in matters of heart or in matters of emotion and also in matters of money and value. Now, Chiron will not give you the magic magic heal that uh, to heal what's broken but it will show you how to love and and you know how to start loving for real uh, it may not be easy but it will worth it you need to face your pain because Chiron it will bring up everything now and that and um, also the lunar eclipse in Scorpio can bring up some long buried issues you know like lunar eclipse they usually reveal something to us so something uh, that you that it was long buried now it could come up you know the good the bad the ugly everything and you're gonna have to face it and you're gonna have to deal with it because these wounds they need to be healed but that's never an easy process right if you keep on ignoring your hurt um, that's not going to be an option okay because you know you need to directly confront your feelings even if it hurts um so your mantra actually for this um for the lunar eclipse it should be uh, you need to face it until you make it you need to face your negative emotions so it doesn't take control over your life eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the, the universe uses eclipses as uh, tools to get us moving to show us that uh some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change. And these are usually um, areas that we are very reluctant to change or we don't even think about, uh, think about needing that, that there's going to be a great need for change. Uh, so because of that, uh, you know, eclipses, they come around, they approach us, they surprise us. Uh, they have this element of, uh, you know, you could, I never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving they shake us out of our feeling of compliancy because we have reached a level of maturation where we need to step up to a different level to a higher level of maturation now eclipses they work very rapidly they want us to change and change during the eclipses are inevitable now, on the 30th of the month is going to be an amazing new moon in Gemini. And I mean, <laughs> I just love astrology that every month there is an amazing constellation in the sky. Like last month, it was the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction. And May, I think, if we survive <laughs> that lunar eclipse, which of course we will, uh, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be painful. But then we have got this beautiful new moon in Gemini to look forward to. Now, the new moon in Gemini is going to conjunct exactly the degree of, uh, of the fixed star Aldebaran. And that's a biggie and that's very fortunate guys and I'm going to talk about that when I get to each sign. Sagittarius, as of today when I'm making this video, sun is going to move into your sixth house of work and health. So that means that during these 30 days up to the 20th of May, during this cycle you take more pride in your work that you do. 
more so than any other time of the year. This is a good time to build skills, to get organized and to, to attend health and well-being sessions. It is a great time to make improvement to your regular routines. Your self-esteem and your ego are tied up to the work that you do and the service that you give. Details are so important now. You could, seek, seek, you could seek distinction and strive towards perfection in your work. Efficiency should be your goal now. Your physical health as well as the relationship between your body and mind are now in focus. Then Venus on the 2nd of May is going to move into your fifth house. And that is such a lovely expression for the goddess of love which is Venus. So it is natural for you now to turn on your charm without even lifting a finger. You feel more playful uh, and love matters now tend to be laced with some drama. You're more loving and appreciative with regards to children. This could be children of your own or any other child in, in, uh, for that matter. Your power of attraction is a skyrocket now. However, you are not actually quite aggressive with regards to your love. You know, you're not, you're not approaching anyone. However, you become a little bit more, um, you know, attractive. So you attract this situation into your life and, and you allow yourself to be pursued by others. Your creative self-expression is favored at this time and you instinctively know how to place yourself in the best light in order to make a very good impression. If there is a love affair that should be starting during this time, which is quite possible, uh, it will be characterized by good cheer, having fun and a fair share of emotional drama. Then Mercury is going to move a retrograde in first in your seventh, and then it moves back to your sixth house. So when Mercury goes retrograde in the seventh house, which is connected to your marriage or business partner, uh, we have a call to renegotiate some terms and conditions. So you know how in relationships, uh, sometimes you have these unspoken rules, such as and agreements such as, um, you know, who sleeps on which side of the bed and who takes the trash down. Uh, is it appropriate to invite over parents or friends now? You are not disagreeing with anybody's mom, especially your partner's mom. And so the, develop the, the, the relationship will have developed to a stage when that's the time. It will come the time when you need to renegotiate and, and uh, some terms and conditions, some unspoken rules. And Mercury retrograde in the seventh house can, ser uh, can bring you closer together uh, to airing your differences of, of opinions. By the time this transit is going to be over, you both feel like you have a better understanding understanding of yourselves however it is not a good time to get married and for some of you it may happen that you will um, reunite with one of your ex but it's not a good time to begin a new relationship with that ex because by the time mercury moves direct again things will have changed so the reverse for this period is going to be renegotiate refine and reunite and on this, and then on the 21st of May, Mercury is going to go Kazemi in your seventh house. And so that is going to be an amazing time to stay open, to receive a message. And Mercury is going to be Kazemi between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. GMT time. Please convert that to your time zone. And uh, one Mercury Kazemi that is uh, that means uh, is empowered by the sun, so it's empowered to to bring you a message. Since uh, we know that Mercury is the messenger of the gods. Now, after the Kazemi, Mercury is going to slide back to your six hours where you need to reorganize your workspace, your office, your desk. Diary. You need to sort out your diary, uh, create a calendar of to-do list. So basically, you, you kind of have to reorganize yourself a little bit, especially with regards to health and work situations. Um, sometimes this transit can manifest as, you know, there's going to be some mishaps and miscommunication amongst colleagues. 
Uh, so because of that, teamwork can suffer a little bit. However, check that every everybody has the right information at hand. And so this could be avoided like that. Mercury here is asking you to become a little bit more flexible. In matters of half as well, this is the time to do a new inventory. So your reverse during this period is going to be reorganize, rejuvenate, relapse, repair, recover, and refresh. On the 16th, that's going to be the biggest event of the month. It's going to be a total blood moon lunar eclipse, and that is happening in your 12th house. And somehow that is going to be also connected to that Mercury retrograde period. The lunar eclipse in the 12th can rouse the subconscious mind and stir up psychic and spiritual tendencies. This is a good, a good time to let go of some sort of addic addiction if you have some. And you may reach out instinctively to the intangible for emotional support. You can become um, very sensitive to psychic and spiritual influences as well. For example, my son uh, is a Sagittarius rising and he has been just waking up nearly every morning lately, as of lately, saying that um, he had this weird dream and, and uh, he just needs some explanation. You may recognize an overwhelming need to rest, maybe because you have, you know, you overburnt yourself, overworked yourself and you burnt out a little bit prior to that. And this is how the six house is going to get connected with that. Uh, you know, so you need to look at your, you know, health routines, which Mercury retrograde will help you with that, and your um, work routines and your health, health routines as well and habits. On May 11th, Jupiter is going to enter Aries, and this is going to stay there for nearly the entire year. And this is uh, going, he's going to bring um, expansion in your, uh, in your fifth house, in your love and children and self-expression area. So there's going to be growth there, expansion and opportunities. I don't really want to go into any depth about that in my yearly horoscope videos, which I'm going to link to this end of this video. Uh, you can go back, find the timestamps and listen to the Jupiter in Aries um, cycle. It's going to be it will worth it because it's going to be a cycle for the throughout the year. And the sun is going to move into Gemini on the 21st. And so he will illuminate your seventh house of marriage and partnerships, whether they are business partnerships or personal ones. So at this time of the year, you have a greater need to relate to someone, to be with someone. A partner we know that will provide mirror for our own self-discovery. So now it is a good time to realize your own potential through the eyes of another. During this cycle, you can focus on balancing out personal issues, interests, and objectives with your social life or with those of a partner. The emphasis it has to be, however, on us rather than on me. And it is a good time to partner up in any endeavor you do during this month because it is not the time to go solo. Uh, it could be that your diplomacy skills are required and you are just generally uh, want to cooperate and want to harmonize, which is always a good thing, right? So on the 30th of um, the month of May, there's going to be an amazing good Gemini new moon in your seventh house. And that is going to conjunct Aldebaran, the fixed royal star uh, that has been thought eminently fortunate for tending riches and honors. So he's also known as Archangel Michael, and he's one of the our guardian archangels so don't forget to set your intentions with regards to partnerships or business partnerships um, because Aldebaran aligned with the sun and the moon is said to be very favorable especially for business but it generally is a very lucky star um, you know brings honors and credits so I hope that helped dear Sagittarius and I shall see you in my next video bye bye Hey, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and press the subscribe button for even more videos on astrology.